Good everyone. Hello, blessings. Let me in, let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Hallelujah. I'm tuning in from Australia, Melbourne. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Can you guys hear me? Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Come on, guys, let's get this. Let's, let's double tap, double tap, double tap. Praise God, David. Hallelujah. Hello, Cliff. God bless you. Good evening. I am the same as the other guy, just on the other phone. God, <laughs> hello, G man. God bless you. It's good to have you, but it's good to have you in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right. How's everyone going? Come on, guys. May the joy of the Lord be our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello, prophet. I am well. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. I just bless every person here coming in. Hello, Jesus is God. Hallelujah. Hey, guys. Come in. Come in. Let's eat. Let's eat the word of God together. I will be opening up to Thessalonians. We will be reading from Thessalonians 4. But in the meantime, I'm just going to um, open up in prayer. Amen. So let's open up in prayer, guys. Thank you, Father. Mm, thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord God. Father, as we just come humbly before you right now in a heart posture of humility, Lord God. Father, I pray as you increase, oh God. Whoo, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would decrease, Lord. Father, as we come boldly into your throne room of glory, Lord God, as we come before you, Father, we submit ourselves completely under your jurisdictions, completely under your authority right now, God. Father, we just welcome the seven spirits of God whoo, into this time right now. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, the fear of the Lord, the power of your might and the spirit of the Lord. We welcome you into this platform. We welcome you. We honor you and we engage with every one of you. Father, we thank you that you are here, Lord God. We acknowledge your presence, Lord God, is in us and around us, Father. Lord, I just pray for every person under my voice, Lord God. Father, that you just come and fill them up right now, Lord God. Lord, if they're weary, God, I pray, God, for an infilling of the Holy Spirit right now. Whew. Yes, Lord. Father, I just pray that you touch every person under my voice right now, Lord God. Father, if there's any weariness in any one of us, I command any heaviness to loose you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the authority of Jesus Christ and the power that rose Jesus from the dead, I decree and declare life into every dry place right now. I decree and declare life into your soul, into your mind, into your body right now in the name of Jesus. I command anything that's not of God to loose you now. Hallelujah. And I just release peace, love, and joy over you right now. Blessing, sister. Lord, I just pray, God, that you just come and strengthen every person here right now under my voice, Lord God. Under this sound, I pray that people will receive deliverance. Under this sound, I pray people would receive healing. Under this sound, I pray that people will receive a renewal of the mind in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that your word will be magnified. I pray that your word will be enriched in our spirit, oh God. I pray, God, that you would be glorified and magnified upon this life right now, Lord God. Father, I pray that there will be such a unity right now, Lord God, that we would be one accord, Lord God, that we would be a symphony, oh God, that we would be one mind, one body, one spirit, one heart, one baptist, one love, and one doctrine, Lord God. Father, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would just come upon them right now, Lord. I pray, God, that you just remove anything right now, Lord God. Father, and I repent, Lord God, for myself and anyone here, Lord God, anywhere that we have not pleased you, Lord God. I repent right now, Father God. Lord, I pray that you come and deal with us, Lord God. Deal with us according to our works in the name of Jesus. Lord, I plead for mercy, Father. I plead for mercy, Lord God. And I thank you, God, that your word says that you come to discipline you love us, Lord, and that you discipline those that you love in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I pray, God, that we will be chastised by the Holy Ghost, Lord God, that you would come and meet with every one of us right now. May the Spirit of the Lord locate us right now. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts, O God. May the eyes of our heart be enlightened by the truth that will be released over this life right now. In the name of Jesus. 
Hu shakata rokoto rantarari kia re re re. Hu, I feel the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Whatever you've been praying for, I stand in agreement with you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Whatever you've been praying for in the Lord, I stand with you right now. If it's provision, I stand with you. If it's healing, I stand with you. If it's deliverance, I stand with you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise his holy name. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Come on, guys. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing glory to your name. Come on, guys. Oh, Lord, glory to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. All right. Welcome in, everyone. Let's continuously double tap and share the live. Amen. Hallelujah. May there be a fresh anointing, a fresh fire upon your altars right now. May there be a fresh fire and a fresh anointing upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I just bless every person here. I pray that the Lord would bless you. I pray that the Lord would keep you. I pray that the Lord would make his, sh his face shine upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the word? Are we ready for the word, brothers and sisters? All right. If someone could put it in the comments, where are my moderators? Could you put up uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? And we're going to read from number 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. This is a scripture that the Father was really speaking to me right now to release over the body. Mm. Hallelujah. So I really want to bring a awareness to the scripture. I really want to bring an awareness to the body of Christ, how we all, brothers and sisters, how we all are supposed to live unto the Lord. Amen. Hey, Chalice, bless you, sister. Sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. Busy, busy. Whew, God's been doing big things, but God be the glory. Amen. All right. I'm going to read four. Thessalonians, one Thessalonians four for every person that's coming in. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have received of us how ye ought to walk. Are you catching that? To And to please God. So you would abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Mm. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, eight people under my voice, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. And as we've already spoken about this, abstaining from fornication is abstaining from the flesh. Amen. It's not literally meaning sex. It means flesh. Like when you share, when, when you are um, in the flesh, that's when you are fornicating because you are doing it without the body. Are you catching that? When you're in the flesh, you are doing it without the body, and that's fornication. Mm. So you've got to abstain from all flesh. Thank you, Lord. For that every one of you, every one of us, should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now, nine people under my voice. Mm, thank you, Father. Mm. 
we need to be able to possess this vessel, our vessel, in sanctification and honor. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna boldly say this, and this is just to speak to every one of us. This is all general. Do you believe remaining in sin is possessing your vessel in honor and sanctification? Amen. Yaju yeah, say, get out of here. We don't listen to doctrines of the devil. But I bless you and I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened by the truth. So, this is to speak to every one of us, including myself. Do you believe, 12 people under my voice, do you believe that when you're, do you believe staying in sin possesses your vessel in sanctification and honor? It doesn't, does it? Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up for, though, is, is conversation. I'm bringing this up because of doctrines that we have blindly and ignorantly carried. When we say that we can't be perfect, we can't be, uh, you know, we, 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 can't, we can't walk um, fully in Christ. So I'm really trying to make you guys just understand that if God wants us to possess this vessel in honor and sanctification, then that means we need the spirit, right? It's the spirit that does it through us. We need the spirit to help us through sin. Amen. Now it's not even about sin. We need the spirit to set our eyes upon Jesus. Does that make sense? Because let's just, let's just, uh, Broaden, broaden this word about sin. God wants us to be God conscious, not sin conscious. Amen. So if God wants us to be God conscious, that sin that you did yesterday or the day before, he wants you to repent for that sin and ask God to help you to overcome sin. Does that make sense? It's not when you fall short today or you fall short yesterday and so because you fall short today or you fall short yesterday this is just an example your mind is fixated on that sin and so your mind has taken its eyes off Jesus and now focusing on self you're focusing on your sin that you did today or you're focusing on that sin that you did yesterday does that make sense now that's how mm, 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 mm. That's how the devil keeps you in condemnation. If he can get you to fix your eyes upon that sin that you did today or that sin that you did yesterday, that keeps you in damnation. That keeps you in condemnation. That actually keeps your eyes fixed off. Um, that keeps your eyes off Jesus. Amen, G-Man. You know, as you say that, God bless you. Scripture says that God is faithful. When we, when we repent for our sins, when we come before a brother or sister, when we repent for our sins, God is faithful to forgive us from all unrighteousness. Now, can someone in the comments say all unrighteousness? Not some, but all. So if you have... If you have forgiven, if you have, and I'm going to say this boldly, if you have repented for your sins today, you are not in sin. Are you catching that? If you have repented for your sins today, that God, that you've come before God and you've repented for known and unknown sins, you are not in sin. You are in Christ. Are we catching this, brothers and sisters? I'm trying to really take in it deeper and divide the word for you. If you have repented for your sins from this day forth, you are not in sin. You are in Christ. Where you do fall short, say you sin tomorrow or whatever, then you recognize that you need more of him and less of you. Amen. 
You need more of him. You need to fix your eyes more on him because he's the one that's going to help you overcome sin. But if you lean on your own understanding, when you lean on your own understanding, you put yourself back in sin. Proverbs says, as a man thinketh, so he shall be. Are you hearing that? As a man thinketh, so shall he be. So if you think you're a sinner, that's what you think in your heart. Now for me, I can say for myself, I'm a saint. Not because of anything I've done, but because I believed in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus came, died on the cross for my sins, rose from the dead and has reconciled me back to the Father. That's why I'm a saint. I am not a sinner. Amen. Because when you truly have that recognizing that you were a sinner saved by grace, and now that you're saved by grace, you are now a saint. You are not a sinner in God's eyes. You are a child of God in God's eyes. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep reading. Thank you, Father. So every person here, eight people under my voice, you need to, every one of us, we need to possess these vessels in sanctification and honor. And the only way that we can possess these vessels in sanctification and honor is by abstaining from all fornication. We have to abstain from everything of the flesh, the ways of the flesh, the language of the flesh, the mind of the flesh. Are you catching that? Mm, thank you, Lord. Five, not in lust. So we are to not abstain. Um, we are not to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor in lust. It says not in lust or concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. That's right, G-man. Praise the Lord. So when we are possessing God's vessel in honor and sanctification, we are not lusting. Hallelujah. As, as the Gentiles do, the ones that don't know God, the ones that are still out there doing, doing, um, doing sin because the God of this world has blinded them from the truth, which is who's the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Six, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified. Seven, for God have not called us. Eight people under my voice. For God have not called us unto uncleanness. God has not called us unto uncleanness. Amen. But unto holiness. So I want to be, I want, I, I want to speak on the word that we are called to holiness. Every one of us, nine people under my voice, you are all called to holiness. Now, what you do from this day forth is on you. But knowing that you're called for holiness, knowing doesn't mean you'll do it. Does that make sense? So you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Just because you know you're called onto holiness doesn't mean people are going to walk in holiness. Doesn't mean people are going to speak in holiness. Doesn't mean people are going to act in holiness. Amen. But having that knowledge, we are called to holiness. That means you've got to continuously seek the Lord for holiness. Meaning you've got to continuously seek him to make sure that you are keeping your robes clean. Hallelujah. Greetings. Keeping your robes clean. And how do you keep your robes clean? Always seeking the Lord, staying short account with the Lord, making sure that if there's any blemishes, any spots, that God will clean it from you. 
Mm, hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, we are called to holiness. Now, I don't know about you. If you're called to holiness, would you turn around and call, would you call yourself a sinner? If you're called to holiness, would you say that, you know, would you say that walking in unrighteousness is holiness? Mm -mm. Absolutely not. Blessings, sister. Absolutely not. So if we, as it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, it speaks about us abstaining from all fornication, abstaining from all flesh. And if we're to abstain from all flesh, we are to possess this vessel, our vessel, in sanctification and honor. And by possessing this vessel in sanctification and honor is what? Abstaining from the things of the flesh, abstaining from the works of the flesh. Amen. I mean, this is simple speaking, but it has to be simplified. Like I've had to like bring, just go deeper with the word to really bring it forth and explain. We are supposed to possess these vessels in honor and sanctification. Hallelujah. We're not supposed to take these vessels and go and ups and, and go and fornicate. And what I mean by fornicate, I'm not talking physically either. I mean, the physical thing you should know by now. But I'm talking about spiritual fornication. Are you catching this? I'm talking about spiritual fornication. If you go gossip about someone, you've done that without the body. Because Jesus don't gossip. If you go and covet, then you've done it without the body. Jesus doesn't covet. If you go and steal, kill and destroy without the body... You are in fornication. Does that make sense? So the works of the flesh of gossip, strife, envy, division, discord, disunity, all of that. If you are doing that, you are, you are literally, you're literally entangling yourself with the flesh. Because those are the works of the flesh. Amen. Let's go to Galatians and read the fruit, the work of the flesh so we can truly Dig deep. Mm. Thank you, Lord. The works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and you shall, um, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. 12 people under my voice. If you are led by the spirit of God, you are not under the flesh. You are not under the law. You are under grace. And who is grace? Jesus. You are under Jesus. You are covered by Jesus. You are not under the flesh of Adam. You're not under the flesh of the old man. You are under Jesus. You're under the new man. This is why it says Jesus has clothed us with Christ. Amen. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery. Now this is all spiritual first. You guys should understand the physical side of it. You've got adultery. You've got fornication. You've got uncleanness. You've got lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. Mm. emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, mm. envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I've told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So that's the works of the flesh, brothers and sisters. So if we possess, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying here. I'm breaking it down. If we possess these vessels and these vessels of God are supposed to be possessed by sanctification and honor, then you can't be going and gossiping. You can't be going and starting up disunity or discord or, or wrath or strife or division. Does that make sense? You can't be going and backbiting. Hallelujah. Yaji Judah, we don't want your false doctrines here, but God bless you. You can't be going 
and doing anything. Thank you, Father. 13 people under my voice. Anything without the Spirit is fornication. Anything without the Spirit is adultery. Anything without the, doing it without the body is idolatry. Amen. Amen. Are you catching this? So we understand the physical side of it, but we are diving into the spiritual side of it. Anything without the body of Jesus. If Jesus doesn't do it, then don't be doing it. If Jesus doesn't do it, don't be doing it. If Jesus does not go and, go and start strife, if Jesus does not go and start gossip, if Jesus does not go and, and um, start wrath and, and, and backbiting and slander and gossip, then don't do it. Because anything without the body is fornication. That's the simplest form I can do it for you guys. Thank you, Lord. So when we truly have that understanding that we have received Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and if we know that we are the body of Jesus, right? 14 people under my voice, we say we're the body of Jesus. So if you know you possess the body of Jesus, would you take the body of Jesus and go and gossip? Would you take the body of Jesus and go and backbite and slander? And covet and murder and fornicate. Does that make sense? When you truly have that understanding, your mind start renewing and then you're like, uh-uh. Because when I used to struggle with gossip, 18 people under my voice, I'll, I'll put it all out. When I used to struggle with gossip because I was very worldly um, back in the day. And so gossip was one thing that God had to condition me out of. Gossip was one thing that God had to uproot in me. Gossip was a place that I was continuously done in the world. So when I came to the Lord, there was things inside of me that God had not planted within me. So then God had to remove idolatry. God had to move gossip. God had to move envy. God had to move strife. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So whatever's in you that you've come from the world and is still in you, then you've got to give it over to the Lord. See, when I would start gossiping, the Holy Spirit would quicken me and, and, and reveal to me, this is gossip. This is not the fruit of the Spirit. This is the work of the flesh. And I'll be instantly like, Okay, let's pray. If someone starts coming into my eardrums and starts bringing some gossip, I'll shut it down. Amen? I'll shut it right down. I'll be like, we're not here to gossip. We're here to pray. Okay, let's pray about it. That's it. That's it. Because we can say, you know, we struggle with this. We struggle with that. So knowing that you struggle with that, then you know your flesh is weak. But guess what? You've got an escape out of that. The flesh, the spirit is willing. Amen. So if you know your flesh is weak in gossip or your flesh is weak in, in fornication or your flesh is weak in adultery, whatever you're struggling with here, God is giving you an escape. And he said, but the spirit is willing. So are you going to deny your flesh? Are you going to pick up your cross and follow him? So the spirit can be willing through you. Amen. That's it, brothers and sisters. So when we truly know that we possess these vessels, these, these vessels are vessels of honor. These vessels are vessels of sanctification. So then we're preparing ourselves for the Lord so that every time that we come before God, he's pouring into us. He's pouring more of him and washing out the things of the world in us. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. Ooh, thank you, Father. So, for God have not called us unto uncleanness. God has not called us unto uncleanness. I'm teaching here. You'll have to wait. God has not called us unto uncleanness. Amen. He's called us unto holiness. 
21 people under my voice. I want to see comments saying God has called me unto holiness. God has called me unto holiness. Amen. See, when I know that I'm called unto holiness, I have that knowledge. So if I have that knowledge, I'm called unto holiness. I ain't going to go and sin, am I? I'm not going to go and, 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 and go do the things of the works of the flesh, am I? Mm -mm. Absolutely not. I'm going to go on, I'm going to go, I'm going to draw nearer to the Lord because as I draw near to the Lord, he draws near to me. Hallelujah. Because why? God has not called us unto uncleanness. He has called us unto holiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Number eight. Oh, come on, Haley. Praise God. The Holy Spirit just came all over me. Praise God. Praise God. Because recognize 14 people under my voice, you are vessels of honor. You are vessels of glory. You are vessels of sanctification. You are vessels of holiness. And so if you know that you have the knowledge that you are that vessel, then you've got to use that vessel and do the things unto the Lord. You've got to do everything unto the glory of God. Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God who have also given us his Holy Spirit. God has also given us his Holy Spirit. How beautiful. How beautiful is that? God has given us his Holy Spirit. Mm, so beautiful. Nine, but as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves, 13 people under my voice, are taught of God to love one another. Because what does God's commandment say? Love one another. Amen. He says to love thy neighbor as you love thyself. His first commandment is love God with all of your heart, all of your mind and all of your soul. So once you've got the heart, soul and mind down pat, guess what? 14 people under my voice. The second commandment is already done. Because why? You love God with all of your heart, all of your mind and all of your soul. So that means the second commandment instantly is fulfilled. So as long as you're seeking the kingdom first, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye the kingdom first and his righteousness. Because why? We're clothed with his righteousness, not the righteousness of man, because that's filthy rags before God. Amen. So we're clothed with his righteousness. So when we seek the kingdom first and his righteousness, he adds everything on top of that. Mm. So beautiful. 10. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. And that ye study to be quiet. And to do your own business. And to work with your own hands. As we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without. So 12 people under my voice, we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. 12 people under my voice so that we could walk honestly. Hallelujah. Toward them that are without God. Toward them that are without the knowledge of God. Toward them that are without the revelation of, of Jesus. Amen. 
So when we are working out our own salvation and fear and trembling, because we're working with our own hands, hallelujah, unto the Lord. Mm, so beautiful, Lord. That we would lack nothing. As it says, that ye may have lack of nothing. Lack of nothing. Amen. Let's keep double tapping and sharing the light, brothers and sisters. 13. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Welcome, James. God bless you. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now those who are asleep are those that are dead in Christ. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying here. Because Jesus didn't just come and die for the religious folks. Jesus didn't just come to die for the Christianities, for the Christians. Amen. Jesus came to die for all mankind. For God so loved the world that he sent his own begotten son, not to condemn, but to, but to believe in him so they can be saved. Hallelujah. So everyone that hasn't believed in Jesus, those ones, those those heathens, the ones that are um, haven't given their life to Jesus, the ones that are out there lost and blind, those are the ones Jesus wants. I was one of them. Thank you, Father. So those that are out there that are lost, they're dead in Christ. Are you catching this? They're dead in Christ because when Jesus died on the cross, he crucified all mankind to the cross. Whether you know it or not, he crucified all man to the cross. Three days later, he resurrected, quickened that sinful flesh, raised it in honor. So we could have a vessel of honor before God so we could have a vessel of glory before God so that we could have a vessel of holiness unto God amen are you catching this so this is why it says you if you have been crucified with Jesus you've been buried the same death as Jesus and you've rose the same resurrection as Jesus amen So those that have been buried the same death as Jesus, they're still dead in Christ. Are you catching this? They're still dead in Christ. They haven't, they haven't had the knowledge of God or the revelation of Jesus Christ to waken them out of the grave, to pull them out of the grave. So those people that are lost out there sinning day and night and people that are just walking around lost, they haven't risen. Because why? They don't have the knowledge of God or the revelation of Jesus Christ. So they don't have they don't have the knowledge of crucifixion and they don't have the revelation of resurrection. Amen. So those people that are out there walking amongst you that are dead, haven't given their life to Jesus, they're still asleep. They're still asleep, just like I was. I was asleep until God woke me up in August 2020 when I tried to, una when I tried to end my life. When I tried to unalive myself, God woke me up in August 2020 on my 30th birthday. I was dead. I was dead. I was dead in sin. I was like dead in Christ. I was dead in sin. And it wasn't until God spoke to me and rose me from the dead. And I recognized that I was a sinner that needed a savior. And because I yoked my soul with Christ, my salvation is sealed. And because my salvation is sealed, then I use my salvation, the token of my salvation, that Jesus died for me freely, that I was given freely because he died for me. I took that salvation and I served God. Amen. I took my salvation and I didn't do the will of the flesh. I did the will of my father. 
Just like Jesus, he had that and he didn't do the will of the flesh. He didn't bow down to the sinful nature. He did the will of his father. Thank you for sowing into this ministry. Thank you for sowing into the works of the Lord. God bless you. Are you catching that? So when we receive salvation, when Jesus has resurrected us, when Jesus has, when we believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we receive that token of salvation. Now, what are you doing with it? Are you taking that token of salvation and, and, and going and doing things of the flesh? Or are you taking that salvation, that token of salvation and serving God? Amen. Hallelujah. So when you truly have that knowledge that you are a vessel of honor, that you are a vessel of sanctification, that you are a vessel of glory, that you are a vessel of holiness. When you truly have that, your mind has been renewed so much that you know that you carry the body of Jesus. You're not going to continuously go and do the works of the flesh. You're going to say, no to the works of the flesh and you're going to say yes to the ways of God amen because those who those who still love the things of the world doesn't have God in them the father's love isn't in them those who still are loving the things of the world the father's love isn't in them doesn't mean that they can't have the Father's love in them. They just have to deny the flesh, pick up the cross, and follow the ways of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to go back to that, that we are not sleeping. We're being risen by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read 13 again. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we, 19 people under my voice, if you believe that Jesus has died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Are you catching that? Thank you for sowing. God bless you. I'm going to say that one more time. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, blessing sister, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Isn't that amazing? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, amen, shall not prevent them which are asleep. The word of God will not prevent those who are still asleep in sin, who are still asleep in Christ. They're not alive in God. So the word of the Lord is not going to prevent them. Sixteen, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. This is why God says the, the, um, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Are you catching that? The first shall be last, so the so the flesh, and the and and the and the and the last shall be first. So remember those that were in the Old Testament, they did it by the works of their flesh. They didn't do it by the trusting in God. They didn't do it by trusting in God. So us, 20 people under my voice, if you are truly here listening to the word of God, you are the last that have become first because you are not born of flesh you are born of spirit hallelujah 
Incredible. Seventeen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. So we which are alive and have remained, we've been caught up with Christ. Whether you know it or not, you've been raptured up with him. So you've been caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. How amazing is that? We've been caught up with him. We've been raptured by his love. God has come and consumed us with his love. He's melt away the works of the flesh. He's melt away the ways of the world and he's consumed us with his love. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, brothers and sisters, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves, 15 people under my voice, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, 15 people under my voice, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he is the light, he is the life, and he is the way in you. You are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. So it says you are the children of light. You, 15 people under my voice, you are not of darkness. So then the devil, the thief, cannot overtake you in the night because you are of light. Amen. So you are not the, ch you are children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep because we are not children of night. We are children of day as do others, but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep, sleep in the night. So those that are asleep, they're, they're dead in the flesh. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day, every one of us be sober, putting on the breastplates of faith and love for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God have not appointed us, 16 people under my voice, I'm going to release that over you right now. For God have not appointed us, you, every one of you, to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have not been obtained to wrath. We've not been obtained to, to, to darkness. We've been obtained to Christ. We've been obtained to the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ. Who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep. So whether we're dead or alive. We should live together with him. Now encourage one another with that word. Anyone that has that is still dead, that is still asleep, and anyone that's still alive, hallelujah, you should live together with him. Amen. Isn't that powerful? So anyone that's dead in sin and anyone that's alive in God is still together with him. 
should live together with him. You know, there's a scripture about everyone will be saved, but not everyone will have the same rewards. Eleven, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know that which labor among you, anyone that works among you and are over you in the Lord and are covering you in the Lord and admonish you, are warning you, rebuking you, disciplining you by the Lord and to esteem them very highly. You are to esteem them very highly in love for their works sake, because their works is not the works of man. Their works are the works of God. Amen. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them, 12 people under my voice that are unruly. So we've got to warn them that are walking unruly, speaking unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but every follow, but ever follow that which is good. So we are to follow which is good, not which is evil. Amen. Both among yourselves and to all men. Bless you, Zach. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Jesus, in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, and I pray for every one of you, 14 people, including myself. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the coming of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's speaking about. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that the epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Whew, that was powerful, wasn't it? Thank you, Lord. That was a good word. So finishing it off with this, brothers and sisters, we are to possess these vessels holy. Amen. We are to possess these vessels sanctified and honor. We are called unto holiness. Amen. We are called Unto holiness. So if you know, every one of you know that your vessel now, and I've said it, you can't say that you can't say that you didn't hear the word of the Lord, because the word of the Lord, 13 people under my voice, has been spoken right now. You have been reminded that you are called unto holiness. You have been reminded that you're called unto glory. You've been reminded that you're called unto sanctification. You have been reminded you are called unto honor. So the Holy Spirit comes and brings all things to remembrance. So he's reminding us how we are to live unto the Lord. We are to walk worthy of the Lord. We are to abstain from the works of the flesh and eat the, and, 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 um, and do the will of God, which is the spirit. Amen. And if we need a reminder of what the fruits of the spirit is, let's read it. And then we're going to finish it off there. 
Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, hear this, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. So 12 people here, you have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Hallelujah. If we live in the spirit, we shall also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory. Let us not be desirous of people. Let us not covet what people have. Amen. Provoking one another, envying one another. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. So, brothers and sisters, 12 people under my voice, this literally crucifies that false doctrine that is going around the body, saying that we can't be perfect. Because I've read to you how we are to possess these vessels. So these vessels, we're supposed to possess them and not do things of unrighteousness. Amen. So if I hear anyone that says to me that we can't be perfect, that no one is perfect. You didn't have Jesus walking around saying no one was perfect, did you? But also as the Father is just quickening me right now by the Spirit, that remember when the when the um a man came up to Jesus and he said, Good master. And Jesus said, Why do you call me good? He said, Only the Father is good. Now a lot of people interpret that scripture like Jesus wasn't good. Now, what Jesus was trying to make people understand is he didn't want, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying here. He didn't want the men, the flesh, the people to cling to his flesh. Are you catching that? Because one, that was before his crucifixion, before his resurrection, and before his ascension. Does that make sense? So he didn't want those people coming to him and calling him good because he was wearing the, the sinful flesh. He was wearing the sinful flesh. He wasn't sinful, but what was upon him, was, he came evidently in the sinful flesh. Are we catching this? You can study yourself approved. It's scripture. So because he came evidently in that sinful flesh, he didn't want people to look at him, he's good. Because that sinful flesh that was on him had to be crucified to the cross, had to be given into man's hands to crucify their own selves to the cross. So three days later, God can resurrect Jesus and resurrect anyone that believes in him. Amen. And they shall be saved. Hallelujah. So I can boldly stand here before you, 15 people under, under my voice. I'm saved. I'm saved. Because why? I believe in the finished works of Jesus Christ. I believe in the finished, I believe in the finished works on the cross. I believe. And not only do I believe by the revelations of Jesus Christ, I know. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be so confident and so sealed 
in our salvation and not just our sanct salvation, but in our sanctification and our purification. Because if we are denying the flesh and, and, and doing the will of God, we've put, we've crucified the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. We've crucified it with the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So before resurrection, before before crucifixion, before resurrection and before ascension, Jesus said only the Father is good because he always pointed back to the Father. And who does the Father represent? Spirit. Because Jesus was still flesh, soul, body and spirit. So he had to remove the sinful flesh. Are you catching that? He had to remove the sinful flesh so he sowed that flesh in dishonor and God raised it in honor three days later. So now that we have the spirit of God, we have the soul of God and we have the body of God. Hallelujah. So 15 people under my voice, if someone turns around and calls you a sinner, I pray that you rebuke them. And edify them by the true gospel of Jesus Christ. If someone around you says that, um, you know, we're not perfect, not one of us is perfect. I'm not going to come in agreement with that. The word says to me that we are to be perfect as our father in heaven is perfect. So I, I ain't trying to be catching everything else. I, I ain't trying to catch everyone else's opinions and feelings and, 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 um, yeah, emotions. I'm not eating that. Does that make sense? I'm not, I'm not about to be eating that works of the flesh. I'm going to eat the fruit of the spirit. I'm going to eat the word of God where the word of God says to me that we are to be perfect as our father is in heaven. Hallelujah. That's right, Christian. So I pray, brothers and sisters, that you don't, that you be fruitful with this word, that you don't just be like, oh, this was a powerful word. This was so good, blah, blah, blah. And then you forget the man in the mirror. You forget Christ in the mirror. Because God don't want you to forget who you are. Remember who you are. 14 people under my voice. Your life is Christ hidden in God. Amen. Amen. Remember who you are. Your life is Christ hidden in God. Now you want some scriptures to back it up. Go and study your self-approved in Colossians. Blessings, Lydia. Hallelujah. Because you've got to, 15 people under my voice, you've got to stop letting people muggy, pervert your wells. You've got to stop letting people People's opinions trouble the gospel in you. Remember, it says it's not another gospel that's been preached. It's someone coming and troubling you. Troubling the word. That's right. We don't want, we don't want our wells to be murky. We don't want it to be dirty. Amen. Hallelujah, Lydia. Mm. I'm going to read one more scripture and we're going to dive into that too, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit,
Now, thank you, Father. I'm going to read James 3, starting with 1. I really want us to start taming the tongue. Amen. 21 people under my voice. I'm going to read James 3 about taming the tongue. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Sorry, what did that say? If, if any man, mm, so good. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Amen. And able also to bridle the whole body. Are you catching that? If you don't offend in word, then you are a perfect man and you can bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a small, with a very small helm, whichsoever the governor listeneth. Five, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of inequity. So is the tongue among our members. Remember, we're talking about um, in First Thessalonians 4, how we are vessels of honor. We are vessels of holiness. We are vessels of glory. We are vessels of, of holiness. Amen. So if we're called unto holiness, we are not to, to do the works of unrighteousness. Amen. So now I'm speaking about how we are to possess our vessels in honor and in sanctification. So if we are supposed to possess our vessels in honor and sanctification, that means we got to learn how to bridle our tongue because out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. So what your mouth speaks is what's already in your heart. Seven, mm, six. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and let it set on fire of hell. Seven, for every kind of, of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of any things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. 16 people under my voice. Your tongue you can't tame. Only the chastising of the Holy Spirit can tame your tongue. Amen. So how I was delivered from gossip and envy and strife and division and discord and all that stuff is I threw myself at the mercy of God and he continuously tamed me, chastised me. Amen. So the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. See, and this is why God is adamant with us about watching what we speak over ourselves and others. Because what you speak over yourself and others, if it's life or death, you are speaking life over them. But if you're speaking death over yourself and others, you're speaking condemnation. You're, you're, you're speaking damnation over yourself and others. Amen. 
Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of man, of God, sorry, the similitude of God. 10. Out of the same mouth proceed of blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So 16 people under my voice, since we have recognized we are to be possessing these vessels in honor and glory and holiness, we are to bridle our tongues. And so we can't be blessing and cursing out of the same mouth of God. Are you catching that? If you know that you are a mouthpiece of God, there can't be any cursing coming out of your mouth. Does that make sense? It's got to be blessings, blessings out of the mouth of God. God doesn't bless and curse. He blesses. Eleven, hear what the Lord is saying here. Doth a fountain send forth all the same place sweet water and bitter? So hear what God is saying here. God's vessels, are we supposed to possess sweet and bitter at the same time? We are supposed to, no, amen. We are supposed to be possessing sweet. Everything out of our mouths should be sweet. Everything. Everything that we speak to one another should be sweet. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a, either a vine, figs, so can no mountain, so, so can no fountain, here, what the Lord is saying here, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. So if we are the fountain of the living water, if we are, if we are the, the vessels of God, we can't be yielding both. Amen. This is why scripture says, as the Father's quickening me by the Spirit. This is why the Father says that you either make the tree good or you make it evil. You can't be serving two masters. You can't be serving mammoth and God. Amen. So you either, from this day forth, you either choose who you're going to serve. You either choose to serve the devil or you choose to serve God. Thank you for sowing into the works of the Lord. God bless you. Who is a wise man? This is what a wise man is. Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you be bitter, envy, strife in your hearts, so envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, 18 people under my voice, it descends from above. So this wisdom, when you are speaking good conversation with works, with meekness of wisdom, that this, this descends from above. Sorry, sorry. This wisdom, sorry, that if you be bitter, envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This one, this one I was talking about, Descends from not above, but is earthly, sensational, and is devilish. So envy, bitter, strife in your heart does not come from God. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. Bitter, envy, strife in your heart is not from God. It's not wisdom from above. It's wisdom from the earth. It's sensational. It's devilish. Amen. Just had to clear that up. I hope you guys understood what I was saying then. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above. Now, this is for us, 21 people under my voice. This is for our ears. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, 
and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. From whence come wars and fighting? So now it's saying, so where does wars and fighting come from among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Flesh is enmity with the spirit. Spirit is enmity with the flesh. Friendship with God is spirit. Amen. Enmity with God is flesh. This is why God doesn't does not delight in the flesh. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us, does it lusteth to envy? So then you've got to recognize, brothers and sisters, if you are gossiping, if you are uh, backbiting, if you are slandering, if you are uh, 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 causing strife, if you're causing, um, if you are envy, if you're coveting, now you've got to ask yourself, does the Holy Spirit desire that? Does that, is that what the Holy Spirit desires for? When you truly know the fruit of the Spirit compared to the works of the flesh, you're going to know that what's in you is not of God, like what's speaking through you, if you're going to gossip, envy, strife, division, whatever, that's a work of the flesh. That's not the work of the Spirit. Amen? The Spirit that dwelleth in us um, lusteth, lusteth to envy, mm -mm. but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, so God resists the pride, but giveth grace unto the humble, but exalts the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. So resist the works of the flesh and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. So he's talking about those of works of the flesh are sinners. Those who works of the flesh are sinners. So he says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. So he's talking to sinners. He's talking about people that are working in the flesh and not doing it by the spirit. He said, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. So he's speaking about the flesh, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one to another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law. So speaks evil of the flesh, and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save, to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? So flesh doesn't judge one another. Man doesn't judge one another. The spirit of God in you judges. Amen. This is why Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. This is why Jesus said, not I it's not I that comes to, it's not I that judges, it's not I that condemns, but who has sent me condemns you. Because God is the one that judges, not flesh, not man. Amen. So when you know you're in Christ, 
you are, you've got the mind of Christ, you're seeing through the eyes of Christ, you can judge because your judgment will not be judged of yourself. It's not judged by man. It's not judged by the works of man. It's judged by the works of God. Amen. This is why when people say, you can't judge me, only God can judge me. Uh, yeah, God is judging you in that person right now. If they are judging you according to the, to the, to the law, if they're judging you according to the law, lawfully, they can judge. Hmm. So go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know that what shall be on tomorrow for what is your life. It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then vanish away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So because you know the truth and the truth has been spoken here, if you don't do what God has spoken through me by the, by the word, by his own word, it's a sin. Does that make sense? Because catch this, 22 people under my voice the flesh, the works of the flesh that God is still purging and, and refining and pressing in you doesn't want to do the works of God. Does that make sense? So if you don't be obedient, it's because of a, a work of the flesh that God is trying to purge in you. It could be rebellion, which is witchcraft. It could be stubbornness which is still flesh. Does that make sense? Anger. That's the flesh. There's a difference to righteous anger and earthly anger anger. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So if you're struggling in your walk in some areas, you're not going to want to be obedient. You're not want to, you're not going to want to do that. You're not going to want to do you're not gonna want to do the works um the works of the spirit you're gonna do the works of the flesh because you're struggling does that make sense the flesh is weak but in the midst of you knowing that your flesh is weak you got to rely on the spirit you got to call upon the lord and you shall be saved because in in the midst of tribulations and trials there is always an escape and it's through Jesus because when Jesus crucified us to the cross with him, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Then he said, I commend my spirit into your hands and he set us free. That's the escape by the spirit. We are free. By grace, we are free. We are no longer under the law. We are not under the law. We are under grace. We've been made, we've been made new and we are saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to finish it up, brothers and sisters. I'm going to open up the panel. If you would like to come up and speak on anything that you were blessed by, if God is nudging you to come up, be obedient. Don't be stubborn. Don't rebel. If God is calling you to come up, come up and speak. Hallelujah. That was a powerful word. So we spoke about the body. 
We spoke about anything that we do without the body of Jesus is fornication, is adultery. And we are vessels of honor. We are vessels of glory. We are vessels of purity. We are vessels of sanctification. We are vessels of holiness. So now that you know that, you're going to walk in the spirit, aren't you? Because you know what you know. Now that you know, you're going to walk in it. And it's not by you walking in it. It's by you saying, denying the flesh so Christ in you can do it through you. Amen. So I'm going to leave this five minutes. And if anyone wants to come up, request in five minutes. If no one comes up, I'm going to close it off in prayer. And we're going to finish it up for another time. Hallelujah. Can you guys still hear me? Thank you, Lord. Oh, this was a this was amazing time. Thank you, Jesus. That's all right, sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Oh, this was such a beautiful word. This is a word, you know, and this is what you want to be fed with, brothers and sisters. This is what you want to be fed with. You want to be fed with the word that is power. Amen. That will empower you because everything we've lifted up on this platform tonight, today, wherever you are, has been life. Amen. Because why? Jesus comes to give life and life and more in abundantly. Anyone that comes and speaks death over you was not sent by the Lord. Amen. Anyone that comes and starts speaking condemnation over you was not sent by God. Mm -mm. Was not sent by the Lord. It was sent by the devil. Praise God, Kylie. You know what, what blesses me the most when I feed the flock, you know, and it's by God's grace that he's given me a flock to feed every one of you. You know what blesses me the most is every time I leave this platform, I know you've been fed well. I know it. I know you've been fed well. I know that I can leave and be at peace that God has spoken to you today. God has spoken to you tonight. That I can leave knowing that you are safe. That you were under sound doctrine. That the word that was released here has renewed your mind. That the word that has released here has delivered you. That the word that has been released here has elevated you in the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo, Jesus. Oh, Kylie, when you, when you, when you elevate in the spirit, you'll be feeding me too. And you feed me. You always feed me. You know, even when you comment, you feed me. So, you know, we're all here to pour into one another. Amen. We don't leave no one behind. You're pouring into me. I'm pouring into you. So um, brothers and sisters, if you have been blessed by this word and you want to sow into this ministry, you can sow into gifts. You can share this platform. You can share this TikTok. You can share my YouTube channel. That's all on my bio on the link. Or you can sow a seed um, into the works of the Lord so that we can push this ministry to as many people that need to hear the word of God. Amen. But I will leave that with you guys all. I'm going to um, log off in three minutes. But if you like to sow into this ministry, you can sow at Mercy Ministry Christ in PayPal, however the Lord leads you. But I'm so full. I'm so full of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord of the earth. Let us see power and majesty. Praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound 
of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. One more minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. And anyone else, if you can't, and I, if you can't sow in um, finance and everything, please, 15 people under my voice, could you please keep me in prayer? Could you keep me in prayer that God will continuously provide what he needs to provide for this ministry? Amen. Whether it's, um, I don't even know whether whatever needs for ministry, can you just keep me in prayer? Just pray that God would bless this ministry to be a blessing for many because that's my heart's desire that God would continuously bless my hands to be, to be a blessing to anyone that needs to be blessed by the kingdom of God. Amen. So I'm just going to close us off in prayer. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for this word, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this word that it has come to nourish our souls, oh God. We thank you for this word oh god that has empowered us oh god father for your word it was your gospel was not in observation but in demonstration oh god and i thank you father that the spirit in us that the word in us has empowered us oh god has quickened these mortal bodies oh god has has um has immortality has 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 swallowed up mortality oh god and i thank you father i thank you god for the word that you've strengthened us oh god i thank you for the word that you have quickened us oh god i thank you god that you love us lord I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in every tongue that rise up against us, Father. Lord, I bless every soul under my voice, O oh God. I pray, God, whatever they need, Lord God, that you would provide in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for grace over my brothers and sisters. I pray that you pour out a favor upon them, Lord God. I pray they would have favor with you, God, and favor with man, Father. I pray wherever they souls tread, that we they would take complete authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you for this word tonight, oh God. Let us not lose this word, but let it go forth and prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hello, Edward. God bless you. Amen. God bless you as well. Thank you. God bless you. Did you want to come up and say something? Oh, I have a lot to say. <laughs> okay can you hear me clearly yes i can hear you all right um it's a little dark in here right now i mean it's four twenty-one okay. in the morning so I'm outside oh wow yeah. well, god bless you for coming up yeah thank you god bless you for your words from god mm -hmm. trust me it's thrown me mm -hmm. it's thrown me a lot a lot of ways you pulled me tonight earlier when you started because i was on my other tiktok and you know I, i've been on your lives a few times mm -hmm. and you talk, yes you, you have talk. And, and i've been struggling with going back and forth with you know the truth because i can hear the truth when people speak it mm. and what it does is it helps me open up my spiritual ears when i hear the truth if i hear a lie it keeps me asleep when i hear the truth oh. it wakes me up wow so thank so you so i put Lord. you I, I put you in my right ear and you all of a sudden you open my ear that I can't hear from that I've been, wow. under, I've been under severe witchcraft Oof. because my own, my own family is into it. And my brother is on antipsychotic medications and he's pushing me, you know, trying to keep me quiet and I'm trying to get closer to God. Why do you, why would you keep me quiet when I'm trying to get closer to God? If you're lying mm. to me, you know, I'm 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 trying mm. to get everybody to tell the truth. If you're if you're gonna keep wow. lying, don't lie to me. I'm not. I have mm. I have nothing to hide. I I want to be I'm everybody. Anything that comes through the Holy Spirit to you, from the Holy Spirit to you, th for me about me, say it. I want to get it out there. I want the truth. I want the world to heal. I want the truth. Amen. So if we can yes, all Lord. heal, we can end this witchcraft that's taken over this world. Amen. 
It's not hard. We just have to trust God to do it. That's it. Trust his name. Amen. I, I believe your word is, is hitting the spot tonight. So, and, and wow, I walked into the house tonight. My, my son and my, my two sons, my daughter's with their mom right now, but my two sons mm -hmm. are in there. My, my deaf brother's on medication. He got pissed at me as I walked in when you, uh, that's why I, I left the live for a second and I was listening oh, to you. Wow. I walked in the house to use the restroom because I'm sitting out here in a, in a campfire and sleeping in my tent. And I did went, he hear me? <laughs> no, he's deaf. He can't hear you. He's, oh, he's, yes. Okay. So he's, he can't hear you. So he, I walked in there and I was, and he got, and I looked up at the, the witchcraft, not the witchcraft, but the, the, you know, the, um, uh, what do they call them? Them stars with the, those are, uh, dream catchers. Okay. So oh, there's yeah, a dream, yeah. catcher. dream catchers. There's a dream catcher standing behind him. And I looked at the mm. dream catcher and I pointed it because he couldn't see my whole face, but I was pointing at the dream catcher. I wasn't pointing at him. I was pointing at the mm. dream catcher. And I was shaking my finger. No. And he went irate and got mad and started just saying, fuck you and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? Wow. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that's bad because it's, you know, dream catching can be good for the people that, you know, believe in witchcraft and all that. But it, mm. if you're using it for wow. evil, if you're using it for evil, then you're stealing from God. Mm. So, wow. So don't, you know, God is first. You put God first. Amen. Before God. God is first. God first, then family. God mm -hmm. first. Amen. He comes through you. If you allow God to take over your body, he comes through you. He he em he enlightens everybody through you if you yes. choose. Yes, so. he embodies us. Amen. And we embody him. Exactly. So I was telling you, I, I feel like I'm embodying the Holy Spirit. And he takes over. And, and I, I feel like I, we play poker all the time. And it, my body gets taken over the Holy Spirit. And they're watching me. And I, they see it. My family sees it. But I don't see it because the Holy Spirit takes over. And then sometimes I mm. see it, though catch it a little bit and i remember it and then i talk about it and then they say i'm i'm being boastful but i'm not i'm choosing to love god and love what he does for me so i'm telling you you know i'm telling people about it and they're telling me to shut up and i'm just like i don't want to shut up when it's something god and he's making me happy about you know but god mm. tells me when i got when I gotta limit myself so and you're like you said in the live we got to hold our tongue right that's right right our tongues amen so it, wow thank all, you lord it's all speaking to me tonight. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, it's good. It's good. You know, um, as I said, I, I, it just blesses me to leave this live knowing that you guys have been fed well. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not mixture. Um, and it's clear. It's sound. You know, it's spoken to every one of God's children. And I've done what God called me to do. And I leave at peace. Yeah. That was a good, that was a good live tonight. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Tomorrow you know, and sorry. sorry, Edwin. And tomorrow there'll be more blessings for us. Oh, amen. All the time. He blesses us daily. All the time. It like, not a day he doesn't like, bless us. Not a minute, not a second, not an hour. He's always blessing us. We follow the spirit. The blessings come with it. Yes. 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 Amen. Thank you, Father. Mm, so beautiful. So beautiful. It just, you know, when we have more people walking in the spirit and teaching the spirit, you know, more people can start walking in the spirit and teaching the spirit. Amen. Being fruitful and multiplying. Yeah. And right. that's it. As you say, we're here to heal the people, right? And by healing the people, Edward, is how we, we allow God to heal us so that he can be a living stream to others. Yep, exactly. Of living water. So when exactly. people drink from you, Edward, they receive healing because you are speaking life to them. That's, That's what Jesus right. was. That's right. Every time they ate from Jesus, they were eating life. Because where? Because why? He knew where he came from. He came from God. Yep, exactly. But Do the like Pharisees in that didn't know they... You know, they didn't know where they came from. Have you ever listened to Mari Emanuel? No. He's I a, think he's so. A, no. He's, he's a bishop in, in Australia. So. Oh, okay. 
Mari Mari Amanda. Amanda. He was he was just attacked by somebody uh, by a Muslim. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. The one with the eye. Yes. Yeah. yeah he... Yes. Thank goodness for His mercy and His grace that God's given him, just yeah. forgiving them. Yeah. Mm. That's that's what it's. Are about. you in Australia? Yes. No, exactly. I'm in, I'm in Ohio. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Um, it is about that. It's just about forgiving people and loving one another. You know. Um. Yeah, just one word that was given from a brother one time, just saying that we've got to stop looking at people like they're good and bad, yeah. that we just look at them all as broken. Yeah. They're because when you truly see that they're all broken, you can love them in their brokenness, just yeah. like God loved us in ours. Yeah, we, you got to forgive them because you know it's not him, them doing it, it's, it's Satan doing it to them. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. Every time someone comes and um, persecutes me or, or, or um, you know, um, accuses me or whatever, um, I just always picture myself hanging on the cross with Jesus. And I said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do because they don't. What Jesus was trying to make people aware that there was a veil over them. And it wasn't until Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn. And you see this if, if people go study themselves approved of when Jesus was crucified. The persecutor, the one that was punishing Jesus, that was nailing him to the cross, he literally saw that he crucified the Messiah to the cross. Which was the Romans, correct? Or was that Jewish people? Um, no, that was the Romans. Yeah. That was the, yeah. Who still run the world right now. But it's over. Hmm. But, you know, Romans, you know, as, as scripture says, we're neither man nor woman, bond nor free, Jew nor Gentile, but all in all Christ. Right. So everyone has Christ in them, Edward, um, yeah. but doesn't mean Christ is formed in them. Exactly. See, that's why we're here to awaken the awaken Christ in them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what we're here to do. The Amen. only way that we can heal people is awaken them out of um, uh, awaken them into their true state, which is Christ. You're right. Having the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. You just got to find that. Just find it. You just got to find the spot. There's a sweet spot and it's a narrow road. And when you find it, you're there. Mm -hmm. And you can't, when you lock it in, it's, you lock it in. And it's fine. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for coming and sharing that, Edward. I must go, but it was always a pleasure to speak to you. And thank you for that testimony. And praise God is waking people up. You know, you're a perfect example that Jesus said, Father, um, that Jesus said that he came for, the, for, for people that are spiritually dead. Amen. See, the Pharisees, they're like, we're not spiritually dead, you know. Our father's yeah. Abraham. And he said, if your father was Abraham, you would have done the works of Abraham. Because the, the works of Abraham wasn't men. It was of the spirit. That's right. Exactly. The Pharaoh sees. Split the mm -hmm. word up. Now you understand. The Pharaoh sees the angels. And they always attack him. So. Mm, God, wow. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Edward. God bless everyone. Love you Have all. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, come and join again. Everyone come and join and eat at the table of the Lord tomorrow. God bless you all. Bye, Edward. Bless you, everyone.